So today we're going to be concentrating on hunt routes and how you can get this information out from Tiger Prism. The first thing we're going to look at is the terminology, understanding what Tiger calls the hunt routes and DNIS numbers and the VDNs, etc. I'm then going to go through an example of how you guys can make a test call yourself and get all the information about that test call and then how you can put that into practice in running, say, a dashboard, a report, or even an analytical widget. I'll then look at showing you how to update hunt groups within the network file, running some dashboards, and running some reports using all of that hunt group information that we've gathered. So I'm going to start then with terminology. So what do Tiger call things, as well as what are they known in the outside world? So I'm going to start with what a hunt group is. So a hunt group is just a method of distributing calls from a single telephone number to a group of phones. So this is probably the most common terminology for allowing calls to route to different people within the phone system. There are things like response groups as well. These tend to be always for the Microsoft Link or Skype for Business. It's a very similar way to how a hunt group works. It still distributes calls. It just has a slightly different terminology in comparison to hunt groups. Microsoft have just called them response groups. We'll also look at DNIS numbers. So what's a DNIS number? Well, it stands for Dialed Number Identification Service. So what this allows you to do is determine which phone number was dialed externally to get into your business. So some phone systems will provide this information to us, and it will allow you to run reports against it. Yes, it is different to what a hunt group is, but you could have a hunt group linked to your DNIS number, and your phone system may not output hunt group information. Therefore, your only way of getting this information is by using the DNIS number. And finally, VDN. So what's the VDN? It's a vector directory number, and it's mainly used by the Avaya communication managers. Again, it's just a way of distributing calls to different numbers based upon ringing a single number. Okay, so hopefully you all now should be able to see Tiger Prism. Now, one thing that I will note during this is that some phone systems may not output all the information that you'll be seeing on the screen. And again, this is why we're going to be covering off how to run a test call to work out what information your phone system provides you. So how are we going to make a test call and how are we going to look at what information is available? Well, the way that we'll do it is we'll simply pick up a phone with either within the business or pick up your mobile phone and make a call into that hunt group. What you'll need to do during this time is note the time that you've made the call, the date that you've made the call, and ask the agent or the phone that picks up the call what extension number they're on. Getting these three bits of information will really help when you start to investigate where this call's gone to and what information the CDR or the SMDR, which is the raw data that's provided to Tiger, is telling us. So, we've made a test call into the group and it's been answered. We've spoken with an agent. We now need to go and investigate what information has been provided to us. So, what we will do is we will start by looking in analytics. So, to access analytics, Click on the analytics tile, then click on the search option in the top left hand corner and select legs. Once you have the legs selected, what you'll need to do then is select the date and the time that you made the call. So I know that I generated my test call on February the 8th and I know my test call was made around 9am. So I'm going to do a search for calls between 9 and 11am. I will then click the Retrieve button and it will return all of the calls here between the time periods I selected. What I will then need to do is look for that specific call that I made and by doing this I can look at either the call and digits, i.e. my mobile number, or I can look at maybe the call digits, i.e. the person that answered the call. So I look through the call. I find the call, so this was the number I generated the call from, and I can then click on the three lines on the left-hand side here. By doing this, what it will do is open a new tab and give us much more information about that specific call. So what this will do is now give me a cradle to grave about what happened on my call. So it will start with call one, 
which was an inbound call that went to this number here. That call was then transferred over to this person here. This person then transferred it to this person here. It was then transferred again. And then finally it ended up the last call being from my number to the Hunt Group or Ben Holden here. So I can see now all information about what happened on that call. Now what I need to do investigating is find out which hunt group that that call went into. Okay, so to do this, I can now start clicking through on the left hand side at all of the different options that are available. So within the telephony here, I would be interested in the phone group. Now if this number here, or the name here is populated, it means we got the hunt group information. So this was the hunt group that the call entered into. Unfortunately, if this information in here is blank, then unfortunately no hunt group information was provided, but it may have been on a different call. So what we can do is we can select a different call, come into telephony, go into phone groups, and I can see how that call had a hunt group as well. Now did my other call have a hunt group? So I could select another call, I could go into telephony, I could go into telephone group, and I can see, ah yeah, that went into a hunt group as well. This time though, it was a slightly different number. This one went into ending 085, whereas this call here went into a group that was 056. So it didn't just go through a single hunt group, it went through multiple hunt groups as the call went through. Now, although you get all the information about hunt groups in here, there are other fields of information that could be of any use to you guys as well. You can get things like bandwidth information if your phone system supports it, or you could look at what devices were called, etc. in here. So when we were investigating the call, we would come into here to do a high level look to see what information ends up in our telephony and in our phone group. Or the other option that you have available to you is within the search legs here, either you can come into telephony and group and you could drag and drop the group names and the group labels and generate the data. And you'll see here that if this information is populated, the group label or the group name, these are the hunt groups here. So these will be the where your hunt groups are in group label and group name. Now, we did talk earlier about DNIS. So if I type in the word DNIS here, we can also add a turn on the DNIS digit field. And one other important field that you may want to look at is called original digit. So called original digits, again, may not contain hunt group information, but what it will do is tell you what number was called originally before it went into the hunt group, okay? So although this number here may not marry up to this number here, it's to show what number that person originally dialed to end up into the hunt group to then be answered by this extension number here. Now, once you have these columns enabled, you could even save your widget by clicking on Save Widget and save it at the top here. If you want to filter on a specific hunt group within Analytics, what you can simply do is drag in the group name field into your filter, click on this, and type in the number that you want to search for. So, you can do a wildcard, so you can say percent, which means anything, and you can say, I want to see all calls made into 891056, for example. And it will show you all calls then that go into the hunt group here. These are the two hunt groups here that end in 891056. So I know during 9 and 11 o'clock on the 8th, I had two calls into that hunt group. I had one incoming call and one internal call. One of them was answered and one of them was not answered. Again, if DNIS digits were populated with information, you could also filter on DNIS digits here as well. So again, what we're trying to do though here is understand what information is available when we've made these test calls to then allow us to go and configure the system to give us the best information back out. Now, one thing that I have done to show you what you could possibly do in analytics is I have created a simple widget which basically shows us the group name and the agent or extension number that answered that call and the total amount of thought time and the average ring time here, the outcome of the call, 
and simply how many calls that agent or person has picked up during the period we've selected. So I've selected at the top here February, and I can see that here there were 28 calls that went into cardiographer. Well, there was a total talk time of 22 minutes, an average ring time of 6 seconds, and there were 28 connected calls, and there were 6 lost calls here. So how did I do this? What allowed me to do this report here or this widget? Now, I can share this widget with you. There are ways to share this. What we can do is we can click export, and if you would like a copy of this widget, then please let me know, and I can send you a copy of this. What you'll need to do is click copy to when I send it to you, come to your import or widget, paste it into here, into this window. When you click confirm, the widget will display as I had it on the screen earlier. So what this widget basically does is puts in the group label, the group name, and the call digit. So what the call digits are, are the extension numbers that have picked up the call. We then take the talk time, we come in here, we sum this up. Again, you may not want to sum it, you may want maybe the average talk time. So you can change these then to be the average talk time. You may want to see the longest talk time, so you could select the maximum. Or you could go the other way and select the minimum value. So now though, we're going to stick with sum. We want the average ring time, so again we've selected ring time and then we've told it we want the average ring time. We then want the call outcome and then we want this field at the end called leg count. So what does leg count do? Well, leg count counts how many times it appears as a row within analytics. So when we looked at the calls earlier in our search legs, we had lots of legs and on the left hand side we had the option to click and it will then show the four legs here. What leg count does is it counts these individual legs to see how many times it's happened. So these are not calls, these are legs of calls. So this will give you the total amount of presented calls to this person. We've also then filtered on the group, and what we said is only return calls where the group name is not blank. So any other calls where there is no hunt group information, we're not interested to see them. Now, what you may have done in the past is created a widget maybe on a set of called digits. What this will mean though is that any calls that go to that person, i.e. an internal call or a DDI call that hasn't gone through the hunt group would be included in your report. So what this specifically does is looks at all calls that have gone into the hunt group and whether they've been answered or unanswered. Once you have this information, maybe you would like to schedule this widget. So you have the ability then to click on the schedule the widget. You can then follow the wizard through and email you this widget maybe on a daily basis. Or it could be that you're going to email it to the person who is in charge of that hunt group to get their stats that they wanted on that hunt group on a daily, weekly or monthly basis. It could even be on a daily basis, you want to send at five o'clock the current day's worth of calls as well. So to do current days within target data, you will need to set the period offset to zero. And you'll see at the bottom here that the target period becomes the current day. So I could schedule this to run at 5 p.m. every day. And in my target data for my current day, so you'll see here at five o'clock, it will run on the current day's worth of data. This means at the end of each day, the manager gets a report at the end of the day showing how many calls have gone into his or hers hunt group. So again, we want to make these test calls to see what information is available. This will allow you to start building reports in analytics and so on. So the next thing we need to look at though is that you'll notice on my telephony groups, you'll notice that some of my groups here have a label. So I've labeled some of these groups. Now this is really useful for me, so I can search for either manpower here or I can search for the group number. So when I do a search here, I can either do it on the group name or on the group label. So how do I configure the group to have a label or a name or a description? Well, this is all done through the modules here and under the network tile. Now, you can either get to it by clicking on the little circle planet type icon here, 
or you can return to the main menu and click on the network tile here. What you'll then need to do is on the left hand side, you will see that there is a group option here. What you'll then need to do is click on the search button or the create button, it's up to you. And you will then see a list of hunt groups that have been automatically learned by Tiger. The problem will be though, is that some of them will be set as unknown here. So what we will need to do is configure these unknown groups by clicking on the three icons on the left hand side here. We then click on the edit. What we can then do is we can choose what type of group it is. So if we know it's a hunt group, we can select it as a hunt group. If it's a queue group, we set it as a queue group. If it's an operator, we can set it as an operator. Or if it's a pickup group, we can set it as a pickup group. The majority though will be hunt group. So what we will do is we will specify hunt group. We will then give this group a label. So we're going to call this one here webinar training test. Once we've made the changes to the label and we specify that they're a hunt group, we can then click save in the top right hand corner here and go back to our search under group and we will see now that the labels have been updated here. Rather than it saying a group number and unknown, it now says webinar training and the type is hunt. Again, you can come into all of the ones that are unknown and configure these. If you're not sure what they are, you do have the option to export them by clicking on export to CSV at the top here. And you could then maybe email this list to your telephony provider or to the team that are in charge of the phone system and ask them to give you what they are because you may not know what they are, so they will be able to point you in the right direction of what they are and what they're doing. Now, once the groups are configured, what this will now do is, as I say, update the labels within analytics. So in here, it will now say the webinar training test. If I go and do a search for this hunt group, if I go back to analytics and search, and go into my telephony group. And do a search for that number for this year. You'll see now that the label has been updated with what we've typed into the system. And this then again allows you to, I could then search on the label rather than on the number. So if I now search on webinar, again, it will still return my 14 legs. So this time, rather than me searching on the number, I've now been able to search on the label. The next part that we will look at is the dashboard. So how can we then use this information that we've input into the system to reflect in a dashboard? So again, we're going to go to the dashboard icon in the top right hand corner here, or the little graph, or you can navigate back to the home page and click on dashboard. It will both take you to the same place, but what we will look under is under incoming and hunt groups. And in here, you will see all of the hunt groups that have been configured. If a hunt group is set to unknown within the group section under network, it will not appear in this window until you set it to a hunt group. What you can then do is choose which tree that you would like to look at. You can say, please return me all hunt groups or only return specific hunt groups. So if I want to put this up on a wall board, I can select a particular hunt group from here and it will just reflect that particular hunt group here. And then maybe I could set this option here to real time. Unfortunately, I don't have a live feed, but this will then every 60 seconds update showing information into these hunt groups. Now, obviously, it doesn't show queuing calls. This is post-event. 
so it will show after the event has happened, but at least it gives them a good idea of how many calls have gone into their hunt group, how many have been answered, and how many have been unanswered. The other good thing about the dashboard is it allows you to change between these options here. So I can click on these lines on the left hand side and what you'll notice is that the grid on the right hand side will automatically update. So if I look at this particular hunt group here, Silversmith, they've had 143 calls presented to them of which they only answered 9 calls. So I can see in here that Morgan's answered 9 calls, okay. They've all come from Imogen, but they ended up at Morgan here, and they've answered all of the calls. But more worryingly, they've lost 134 calls, of which they've all come from the same number. There's some testing that we were doing. But you can see quite clearly that this department isn't picking up all of their calls. So I can see here they've only answered 6% of their calls. So by clicking on these boxes here, it allows me to filter on these calls. And what I can do is I could then maybe sort on the, the calling digits, i.e. the numbers that are ringing in, and maybe I could be getting one of my agents to start ringing back these people that we've missed, to say, ever so sorry we missed your call, we were extremely busy, but we're now here and able to help you. So this is very useful information as well about ringing people back and giving the customer the best service that you can provide to them. It may be also as well that the hunt group managers just want to see who's answering the calls within those groups. So they could click on the answered call and they could see the person's name in here that's answering the majority of the calls. And just by quickly flicking through here, they'd be able to see that Liam is picking up more calls than Kate and Isabel hasn't really picked up too many calls over that time and even Phoebe hasn't picked up any either. So what this does is just helps the manager see who's being more proactive in that group in answering calls and who is not. You would also get up here as well some high level information about what's going on into your hunt groups as well on a monthly basis. You can remove these graphs by simply clicking on the icon up in the top right hand corner here. You can also turn legends off by clicking on these coloured lines here. So it will only show calls, for example, so you can see what was the percent or what was the call flows over that period. This is available on all dashboards that have this graph here, so it's not just specific to the Hunt Group dashboard. What you can also do within this dashboard is enable and disable columns. So you can click on the Show Columns here and Enable Columns. You can reset columns by clicking on the reset column button, but you can also filter on each one of these columns by clicking on the filter option and selecting whether it contains, does not contain, and what you're particularly looking for. So as well as being clicking on these squares to filter, you could also filter on these specific outcomes here as well. So that's the Hunt Group dashboard. Now some of you may have noticed that I was clicking on this little triangle button here to move the side panel in and out. Obviously if you are going to display this on any kind of display, you can click on this triangle on the left hand side just to make this a bit more full screen. You can also download plugins for your browser that allow it to be full screen as well. Okay, so the next part that we're going to cover off is how can I use my hunt group in a report? At this moment in time, there is only one report that supports Hunt Group. To get to the report, simply click on the report tile, which is the little graph with the arrow here. Or again, you can get to your report by clicking on the report tile here. So the only report that has Hunt Group enabled is under the incoming and the endpoint response report. So how can I filter on hunt group through here. Well, on the right hand side, what you will notice is there is now a hunt group button here. If I select the hunt group, I can then choose which hunt group I'm interested in, in running a report on. I could run this on more than one, but if you want true reflections on what's happening on your stats, I would only select one at a time. So I'm going to select this one here. 
ending 891056. I'm then going to come back up and select my date. So I'm interested in data in February. And I'm going to click Generate. What this will then do is show me all calls that have got into that hunt group and which people have answered the calls within that group. So I can see that Georgina picked up one, Gabriel picked up five, Elliot picked up five, Jasmine picked up one, Ben, who was the main person, picked up 228, Mason picked up three, and Kate picked up one. Now, you're probably looking at this and wondering why Ben has the majority of the calls. So within your phone system, what you have is the ability to choose which information appears on the report. As the final dialed number within Cisco, what you can do is you can choose whether you want the hunt group as the final dialed number to come out in the CDR, or you can have the agent numbers to output in the final dial digit. It's the same within Avaya. You can go into the CDR format and choose whether it's the member of the VDN that gets output or the VDN that gets output. So what I did is during um, February, when I did some testing, I had it on both ways just to show you what the difference of the information that you will get. Now, always lost calls for hunt groups will always be lost against the group. It's unfair to assign a lost call to a person because it wasn't their fault they didn't pick up the call. Now, once I have my report here, what I can do is export this information to either a PDF or to an Excel Word sheet. So to do this, I click on Export to Excel. And what you'll see here is the report has been exported. And then maybe that you need to add a graph onto this or something the end user needs. So what you can do is you can highlight these columns here and then you could maybe insert some graphs. And here you'll be able to use Excel to add graphs, et cetera, onto the report before you send it on to the end user that requires it. If you don't want to do that, then maybe you can schedule the report. So now I've selected my hunt group here, maybe I want to schedule this report. So I can click on the schedule report button. I can then follow the schedule wizard. Now, because I've set the parameter in my report for that particular hunt group, it will be pulled across here automatically into my scheduled report. If you do need to change the hunt group, maybe, you can come back in and edit and change the hunt group in here. You will then fill in your success notifications, failure notifications, which format that you require to send it in, and the file name template that you're going to give it. So this is the name of the file that gets added to the email. So you can click on the three buttons here, and you can choose what you want to add in here. If I say report name, and then you can put in free text as well here to make the file name up. Once you've gone through that, you can then save that report, and that will then automatically be emailed to them on the frequency that you've requested to send the report on. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly cover back over again about investigating the calls. Once again, make a test call. Let's see what information comes out in the test call. So go back into your legs. Select your times and dates in your date selectors here. Add in the columns. So we talk again about these group columns, the group label, and the group name, and the DNIS, and the called original digit. And then just investigate or look at the calls that you've made by clicking on the three icons on the left hand side here, go into your telephony and phone group and just see whether any information is populated in there. Or you can come into your options here and then sort on any one of these columns here to see whether any information has been provided within that call. Okay, so I have some uh, questions here that I'm just going to start going through. So one of the questions was the top X within the report. 
so under the incoming and endpoint response support. So what these are is it allows you to show what are the top amount of numbers within the report. So what you can do is you first of all you choose what you want to search by or sort by. So if I want to look at answered calls for example, I would select answered calls and show me only the top 250 people that are within that group that have answered calls. Okay, if I'm interested in unanswered calls, what it will do is show me my top 250 people by unanswered calls, obviously being the person that has un not answered the most first to lowest. If you want all, then you would select first 10,000 in here. But 250 people in a hunt group is a fair amount that should cover off most requirements. Okay, I think that's all the questions I can see from here. So, I say if there was any further questions from any of you, feel free to drop me an email and I'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. If not, what will happen is I will create a support ticket for you and one of our support engineers will be in contact with you. Thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and if there is anything else you would like to learn about Tiger Prism and its other modules, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.